So my presentation will start with a very brief introduction to, to the company and uh, to the presenter, myself, but I think that uh, someone has uh, done a very good introduction. Then I will uh, try to answer the um, one question that has been around for quite a long time, including in LinkedIn uh, around the invitation. Uh, the question is uh, why textile requirements in, uh, in, um, uh, in Capella? And uh, then I will uh, I will uh, introduce the main capabilities of uh, the R82 uh, for Capella, uh, and I will follow with a live uh, demo before uh, we start with the Q&A uh, uh, session. So quickly speaking, some few words about uh, various company. Uh, this company was established in 1999 as a spin-off of uh, university here in Madrid. Uh, we have uh, managed uh, to raise and, and uh, group together people from different uh, skills, uh, software engineers, systems engineers, now artificial intelligence and natural language processing people. Uh, the company is headquartered in, uh, in Madrid uh, with another office, a small office, commercial office in Stockholm, Sweden, and a delegation with a partner, a main partner in, in Tokyo, Japan. And our uh, aim is to provide a knowledge-centric approach uh, to leverage uh, uh, systems engineering activities in all of our customers. Um, the TRC, uh, we like to use this acronym to make our name uh, shorter, uh, TRC, the reuse company. And uh, we also like this acronym, TRC, not uh, only because this is the acronym of the company itself, but also because it is the first letter of the three main uh, technological pillars of, uh, of our technology, let's say. If you just allow me a, a small uh, change, because um, uh, the word quality in Spanish is spelled with a C, while probably in the rest of the world, uh, in uh, English, French, uh, German, Italian, it is uh, spelled with a Q. So if you allow me this uh, change, uh, then I can introduce these uh, three main uh, pillars, like uh, T for traceability, R for reusability, and this is, by the way, the, uh, our full name, let's say, and uh, Q for quality. And uh, this is the topic of, uh, of uh, today's uh, webinar, how to leverage or how to uh, implement uh, tools and methods uh, to uh, enhance the level of quality of your requirement specifications. And uh, with this, enhance the level of quality of your overall uh, projects, right? Um, just a few words about our customers, uh, over 20 customers uh, all around the world, uh, mainly in Europe, uh, uh, but also in the US, in uh, South America, in in Asia and also in uh, Oceania. Uh, companies uh, within uh, many different industries like uh, aerospace and uh, uh, aerospace, uh, this is, uh, I should say, our key uh, industry still today, but uh, working also very hard in uh, automotive industry, healthcare, uh, energy, infrastructure, um, legal companies and uh, financing and banking companies as well. So I think that uh, I have been already introduced, so I, I skip this one and I go right to, to the point and right to the, uh, to the question. Why textual requirements in, in Capella? This, uh, as I said, uh, this is uh, key. Uh, so um, this is the, the, I hope that the standard definition of what Capella is, uh, probably you know it uh, far better than me. I just uh, wanted to highlight uh, the concept of uh, customer needs uh, as, as the main, uh, sorry, as, as the first uh, of this list of uh, main characteristics. So this is uh, going to be uh, my topic uh, uh, today, focused on on uh, customers' need. And then, of course, when it comes to to model somehow these needs, uh, uh, um, uh, Capella allows a clear distinction between uh, this uh, need model uh, that helps uh, formalize and consolidate uh, customers and system requirements. Uh, uh, this main distinction from uh, uh, from a solutions model, uh, which uh, helps validate feasibility, uh, elicit, uh, justify new requirements uh, for the systems and the subsystems. So these are the main two pillars uh, of uh, of Capella. Of course, there is yet a third uh, pillar here, which is the text or requirements. Uh, uh, this is our key focus. Uh, that, uh, as uh, I mentioned here, text requirements represent uh, the heart of uh, of the current and during practices. So it is uh, clear that uh, for all of you and for all the Capella um, community, uh, models uh, are normally used to add rigor uh, to, to the uh, expression of the need or requirements. Uh, models also enable uh, automated uh, processing, especially when, when, it, when it comes to, 
uh, automatic uh, uh, simulation or even validation of your systems. Um, but we can also say that a model requirement can formalize a textual requirement and explicit its uh, effects and ramification. So this is uh, now uh, introducing this uh, third statement is introducing uh, both uh, parallel concepts, uh, uh, textual requirements and uh, model requirements, uh, uh, both uh, both to uh, to be linked uh, in order to to make, uh, as I said here, make uh, make explicit uh, these uh, effects and ramifications. So I keep uh, all these um, these three statements as a kind of uh, source of truth. Uh, so this is I'm not removing this. I'm just keeping it uh, in this corner. Uh, however, I would like to add uh, some additional statements uh, concerning um, text requirements. So we could say that uh, text and textual format is normally a better approach in the first uh, iterations with uh, and in interactions with uh, customers and suppliers both. Uh, normally, uh, around our systems, uh, we will find uh, plenty of uh, different uh, legally binding documents that uh, normally are not uh, coming in the format of a model, but uh, normally coming in the format of, um, of a textual statement or textual document. Um, High-level needs and other uh, expectations, uh, like environmental uh, or regulation requirements, are easier to be expressed uh, with uh, textual descriptions uh, rather, with, rather than with models. Uh, some other expectations uh, on a given element at a given engineering level or abstraction level, I should say, uh, do not require any formal uh, modeling. Probably this could be uh, the, the topic of, uh, of uh, subsequent uh, decomposition of the system. Uh, so, um, uh, put it, put, putting it uh, everything in one single uh, sentence, if I should uh, uh, follow uh, a clear leader in quality, I should say that uh, text allows uh, for a much easier focus on, on quality. The verification of textual requirements in the earlier stages of, uh, of our project uh, definition. And just um, remember the statement uh, from uh, Edward Deming saying that uh, quality is everyone's responsibility. If we only rely on models, uh, then uh, the responsibility for the quality of our systems only rely on those people um, uh, that uh, can at least understand uh, uh, what is uh, the message uh, conveyed uh, uh, after a model. So, starting with uh, textual specifications, uh, we uh, can make that um, everybody in the organization could be engaged in the uh, goal of uh, increasing the level of quality of our systems. So, having said uh, that, um, I hope uh, I managed uh, to convince you that um, a textual uh, format uh, of needs and requirements are not only useful, but uh, clearly are fully necessary. So, this is our this is our approach. Um, if we follow some um, uh, descriptions of, uh, of uh, what uh, system sharing is, uh, uh, one of the first ones that uh, comes to, to my mind is uh, this one by, by the CBOC, uh, or even also uh, it is coming in the glossary of, uh, of the INCOSE system sharing handbook, uh, version 4, if I am uh, correct. So, Aside uh, with uh, or together with the full uh, description, I, I would like to to highlight uh, this uh, block here, uh, defining uh, so it focused uh, the the system training discipline focuses on uh, defining customer needs and uh, required functionality early in the development life cycle, uh, documenting documenting requirements, and then proceeding with design, synthesis, and uh, system validation while considering the complete problem. So so the statement of uh, documenting. Uh, these uh, requirements in a, in a very early stage is is key again, and uh, normally according to our approach, uh, uh, we do think that uh, uh, textual uh, format for these uh, needs and requirements is uh, far better than uh, just starting right uh, to the to the model, even if uh, of course uh, Capella is uh, is a model in tune. Uh, another important uh, definition. In this case, uh, uh, if we think of this uh, perfect requirement following following the, the title of this webinar, uh, I also like the definition of uh, of uh, what a requirement is uh, based on uh, or that you can find in the NASA Systems Engineering Handbook. Uh, so I like uh, to I'd like to highlight uh, this uh, this topic here. Uh, so our, our requirement is expressed as a shall statement. So clearly. Uh, mentioning the idea of uh, textual requirements. And I also like uh, this definition uh, because it is uh, from the very uh, own definition, it is highlighting the need of uh, high quality requirements. So, uh, uh, as uh, you can follow here, uh, acceptable form of a requirement statement uh, 
is individually clear, correct, uh, feasible to obtain, and ambiguous uh, in meaning, and uh, can be validated at the level of the system structure at which uh, it is stated. So this is, uh, to, to us, uh, this is uh, key in the definition of the uh, requirements engineering discipline, and of course, uh, in the definition of, of the systems, systems engineering discipline. So if we think of um, uh, following this uh, NASA systems engineering handbook, uh, if we think uh, now of uh, on the technical definition process uh, of, uh, of a requirement, it comes the uh, recursive and iterative approach that, uh, of course, uh, uh, most of the times is, is not uh, uh, fully affordable when uh, we are just uh, managing uh, uh, documents with requirements. So this is when, uh, in, in our approach, uh, this is uh, when uh, uh, models, and in this case, Capella comes into play in um, providing this uh, shape of uh, recursive and iterative um, definition for our system by defining um, uh, different layers of abstraction uh, or decomposition layers um, in a model and obviously uh, followed by uh, requirements, textual or model requirements, uh, uh, layer by layer, uh, where these uh, um, requirement statements uh, has to be expressed at the level of abstraction that is required uh, given the level of uh, decomposition in, in our model, right? So this is again a, a key slide to me to, to show this balance between uh, textual requirements and, and models. So we need uh, both. We cannot do system sharing without uh, models and uh, we cannot uh, do systems engineering without uh, uh, textual statements for the requirements. So, uh, coming back uh, to the question of uh, what uh, is, is a perfect requirement or how we can uh, manage uh, to have these uh, perfect requirements, um, we like also always to mention that the perfect requirement is a requirement that is uh, correct uh, somehow. It is not uh, breaking any of the rules that uh, you can establish uh, for this. Uh, I will uh, address these uh, three uh, uh, cornerstones uh, in a minute. It has to be well structured. So, in order to reduce ambiguity in our requirements, uh, it is uh, far better if we manage uh, to follow a specific or a given structure for our uh, textual uh, individual requirements, and also, of course, uh, well structured in terms of the, the uh, format uh, or the content of, of a requirements document. And uh, uh, consistency is another uh, key point. Consistency, both uh, internal consistency among the requirements, but uh, also and mainly consistency between requirements and models, as I will show you in a minute. So, uh, uh, in, our, in, in our approach, uh, these are the three uh, key uh, uh, concepts to come out with this uh, perfect requirement. If I now go with a little bit uh, more of detail, um, the first step was uh, this uh, correct uh, uh, requirement of free of mistakes. In here, you can, uh, you can find uh, plenty of different uh, definitions of uh, of uh, what uh, is uh, a requirement or what uh, kind of uh, characteristics should uh, a requirement uh, process in order to be considered as a high quality requirement. So we, uh, as Samuel mentioned, um, uh, of course, uh, I will uh, endorse uh, the INCOSE guide for writing requirements as a very good and nice starting point uh, in the definition of uh, these uh, quality requirements, uh, sorry, quality characteristics and uh, quality rules uh, for high quality um, uh, requirements. Uh, however, this is not, of course, uh, this is not uh, the only definition of uh, quality rules. You can find uh, plenty of other quality rules in other standards uh, uh, or, or, or handbooks like the NASA Systems Engineering Handbook, or if you work for the uh, European uh, space industry, then you will find very useful the ECSS drafting rules that uh, you can find among the different uh, um, uh, ECSS standards. Uh, I must uh, mention that um, these uh, three uh, topics that I am mentioning here are already has been already covered uh, by various company, uh, both in um, in webinars. So that if you want uh, to learn a little bit more about uh, any of these uh, three uh, elements, uh, uh, I encourage you to visit our um, website, reusecompany.com and uh, just uh, browse the, the website uh, until you reach uh, the uh, webinar section in the, on the top uh, menu. And then uh, there you, you will find uh, uh, webinars uh, for INCOSE, uh, webinars for NASA, and webinars for the ECSS uh, drafting rules. Uh, by the way, all these uh, three uh, points have been also covered uh, in, um, uh, in uh, libraries that you can download. So together with our tools, uh, you can uh, you can uh, download uh, all these uh, materials so that you don't have to implement uh, all these uh, quality rules uh, from scratch. 
So the second point was um, uh, uh, connected to the structure of the requirement, of the textual statement in the requirements. Um, and here you can also uh, think of uh, different uh, possibilities of uh, around uh, patterns or boilerplates. I just uh, wanted to highlight uh, these uh, two approaches. The first one uh, are the ERs uh, patterns. Uh, ERs stands for uh, EC approach uh, to requirements uh, syntax. So it is a definition of um, uh, six uh, different uh, types of requirements, uh, provided that each of these type of requirement uh, is including uh, its own um, uh, structure or, or grammar, just to represent uh, requirements of uh, different types including uh, event-driven or state-driven or unexpected behavior or optional uh, features in, in your systems or uh, a combination of uh, all these uh, different elements, right? So this, the definition of these um, six types of, uh, of patterns is available in the ERs uh, uh, website uh, by Alistair uh, Maven. And uh, we, I also had the, the chance to, to share uh, one of my webinars uh, with uh, him uh, two, three weeks ago. So if you want to learn more about this, uh, you can also visit our website and download uh, both the, the content from this uh, uh, webinar and uh, um, uh, the library that uh, contains uh, all these six uh, uh, requirements, requirements patterns. Then uh, the second approach among others uh, for, for structuring Requirements could be especially if, if uh, you are a German speaking uh, company or, or, or individual, then you will find probably very useful the master uh, patterns uh, defined by the German company Sophist. Uh, this uh, this uh, master is describing a number of different patterns uh, with a little bit more detail than, than the EAS approach. Uh, we also we have also developed uh, a library coping with these uh, master patterns, and uh, you can find all this information in our web, uh, website. Then, uh, when it comes to consistency, uh, checking consistency, uh, we can uh, address uh, consistency from many different standpoints and, uh, and uh, dimensions, as I will try to show you during this webinar. Um, starting with uh, consistency in terms of, uh, of your glossaries and dictionaries, uh, and now this box, uh, uh, black and, and, and blue box, uh, is representing our tool knowledge manager, the tool that we use to deal with the uh, dictionaries, taxonomies, uh, glossaries, and so on. But also, and mainly, uh, now that uh, we are speaking about uh, Capella, uh, consistency between uh, your requirements and uh, the information in the Capella models. Uh, uh, consistency in the way you name your elements in your requirements, in your textual requirements, following exactly the same names as used uh, in your Capella models and also consistency in, uh, in uh, some uh, definitions and, and some of the information you can provide in a textual requirement that should be uh, fully consistent with the information from your models, as I will show you in one of my slides and also in the, in the live uh, demo. And then, um, uh, together with the three, uh, these uh, three main points that I was presenting in, uh, also in my previous slide, I also uh, like to highlight the concept of uh, tailoring. So I can I can introduce many different aspects like uh, quality rules uh, or, or patterns, uh, boilerplates or whatever. Uh, however, at the end of the day, uh, normally uh, you will find very useful all of this material. But at the end of the day, as I said, probably you will find even more uh, useful when uh, you can tailor uh, uh, both uh, quality rules and uh, and uh, requirements patterns according to the specific needs of your of your companies, right? So adapt it uh, to your own industry, the level of skill of your engineers, uh, the, the level of abstraction of your documents, the stage in the life cycle, and so on and so forth. So uh, hopefully we have um, released a book uh, describing how to tailor um, uh, the real-time quality assessment uh, using the INCOSE guide for other requirements. So uh, this uh, tailoring guide is available in our website. I think that it is not publicly available, but uh, you just uh, uh, send us an email uh, if you want to have a copy of uh, of this uh, tailoring guide. I also presented uh, uh, a webinar on this topic of uh, why tailoring and how uh, tailoring uh, both uh, quality rules and uh, and uh, requirements structure uh, in order to reach uh, your goal of uh, increasing the level of quality of your requirements. So all this, as I said, is available uh, in our website. 
Then, uh, having said that, as an introduction, uh, now I will uh, focus on uh, on the tool itself, uh, the add-on that we have uh, developed uh, for for Capella. So this is uh, the requirements uh, offering tool for for Capella. The main capabilities of the tool uh, is, uh, as I say here, uh, will allow you to connect uh, both uh, textual and model requirements, which is uh, nice. Uh, however, it is not uh, that easy. It has to be consistent, uh, this connection, consistent and robust. And uh, quality must be guaranteed uh, at uh, both sides uh, and shall be checked uh, as early as possible. Right? So this is, um, this is our key, uh, the key goal of our tool. And in order to accomplish uh, that, uh, we have implemented a number of different uh, uh, main capabilities like uh, consistency checking, uh, pattern-based uh, writing, quality checking in real-time, real-time quality checking, uh, accessibility issues, uh, usability, and also round trip uh, between requirements management tools and uh, and uh, uh, Capella, right? So let me start uh, with the first uh, key topic, which is uh, real-time quality checking. In fact, uh, the idea of uh, real-time quality checking is is key. Uh, I don't know if you have ever seen uh, this uh, chart uh, from IBM uh, three years ago. Uh, it is staking something that probably you all know. No, I don't know if you know the exact figures or not, but probably you all know that uh, um, uh, if we consider the number of uh, defects that are normally introduced uh, during the life cycle and the development of a system, 70% uh, of these uh, defects are somehow introduced uh, during this uh, early phase or of, uh, of requirements management. Um, but uh, uh, in, in my personal opinion, uh, uh, what is even worse is that uh, only 4%, as you can read here in the green uh, line here, only 4% of this number of defects are actually uh, detected and, and uh, somehow fixed uh, in this earlier stage. Of course, uh, the later um, uh, you try to detect and fix uh, your defects, the more expensive it will be, including if a defect is uh, detected in the operational phase, it could even mean uh, human lives, because uh, probably you all are dealing with uh, uh, safety critical domains like uh, aerospace or defense or, um, or uh, automotive uh, or healthcare. So at the end of the day, if you find a defect in, in the operational phase, it could uh, even mean, as I said, a human life, right? So our, our approach here is, uh, of course, uh, is aiming to reduce uh, this uh, defect uh, rate. Um, uh, in any case, uh, we are all humans and uh, humans uh, do make mistakes. So probably we will not uh, reach the goal of reducing this uh, level of defect uh, until uh, zero. Uh, however, if uh, for those defects uh, that uh, we uh, commit as humans, uh, we manage uh, to detect uh, uh, most of them in this earlier stage, uh, uh, even before we transit into the following stages of the life cycle, then uh, the benefit in terms of, uh, of uh, quality and also in terms of uh, time to market and, and, uh, and uh, money uh, due to the reduction of the cost uh, um, uh, of, of the rework uh, will be huge, right? So this is uh, our approach. Uh, in our uh, real-time quality approach, um, of course, we like uh, all, uh, always to follow the INCOSE guide for reference requirements, as I said, but uh, we like uh, to classify all these uh, quality characteristics and quality rules under three main categories or quality dimensions. Uh, the first one uh, and easiest one, and uh, this is uh, the main uh, concern of the INCOSE guide, is uh, correctness, is focusing on the quality of uh, individual requirements. While if we move a little bit uh, farther, then uh, we will find uh, uh, consistency and completeness as uh, checking, different checkings of uh, quality, not uh, just uh, for individual requirements, but mainly for sets of requirements or even uh, sets of requirements documents. So all this is uh, somehow, as I said, somehow described in this INCOSA guide, but especially uh, uh, consistency and completeness is something that uh, we have uh, developed uh, uh, on our own. So, uh, what uh, can you find in uh, in um, in our connection with uh, Capella? You can find uh, these uh, three dimensions: correctness, consistency, and completeness. Let me start with the basic uh, uh, cor uh, correctness, uh, where we can deal with uh, metrics based on on the requirements management system itself, or even in the modeling system itself, like uh, attributes that uh, has to be filled out, or links or traces that uh, should be there 
or this kind of, uh, of uh, very quick uh, checks. Uh, however, when we go down to the actual text of the requirements, uh, then we find other metrics like uh, uh, definition of uh, ambiguous concepts or, or uh, elements that uh, should be avoided in our requirements like pronouns or the identification of other elements that uh, uh, can be uh, optionally used in my requirements, but uh, in, a, in a kind of uh, con con restricted way, like uh, negations. So uh, uh, with regards to negations, you will find uh, companies or people saying, um, uh, well, negations are okay, or you will find other people saying, no, 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 negations are not okay at all. And uh, you will find people in between saying probably, well, negations are okay, but uh, probably just for safety requirements, but never for a functional requirement. So, so the idea uh, with our tool, as I was mentioning before, is the idea of uh, tailoring, the, how easy it is to tailor the way uh, uh, the RAT tool can analyze the quality of your requirements. So uh, if you want uh, to be on one of these ends, uh, so I don't want to use negations at all, you can uh, tailor in a minute if you are in, on the other side or if you are if you are in this balanced uh, situation in the middle, then of course you can also tailor it this way. Another example of, uh, of uh, uh, the possibility of tailoring the way you write requirements is uh, with the use of this uh, mandatory shall. So uh, there are people using always shall in the requirements. So for instance, if you follow the ECSS standard, and if I am correct, uh, you, are, you will be encouraged uh, to use uh, shall as much as you can, and probably not other um, of these uh, modal verbs, especially when you are dealing with, uh, with the requirements. Um, uh, however, there are people using these uh, three keywords, uh, shall, will, should, and uh, we also uh, have uh, some customers that uh, write requirements using shall, should one, should two, and should three. So they have invented, let's say somehow, they have uh, came out with uh, uh, their own uh, list of modal verbs, and uh, now when they write a requirement, uh, the tool is helping them uh, to pick one of these four options, shall, should one, should two, and should three. And of course, as soon as they pick uh, should uh, two, for instance, they can see a label in the screen saying, you have selected should, uh, should two for this requirement. This is meaning this and this and this. Then uh, the third uh, block of, uh, of uh, correctness metrics uh, is um, uh, connected to the idea of uh, linguistic algorithms like the text length, misspelling detection, readability issues, uh, detection of passive voice, imperative tense, and so on and so forth. Uh, all this is part of our tool out of the box. And uh, what, uh, uh, what is even more important uh, for the uh, uh, Capella uh, community of practitioners is the possibility to check uh, uh, um, uh, the correctness or the conformance between your requirements and your models. So if you start with uh, with a model uh, describing the the composition of uh, from from the uh, system of interest uh, to the different uh, systems and subsystems and components and so on, then uh, you can ask our tool to uh, real time have uh, quality checking just to check uh, whether all the requirements are conforming to this uh, decomposition schema that uh, you can follow in in a Capella model or uh, another example that you can also hit, see here is, is uh, a state chart that you can uh, check uh, whether or not uh, your state transitions, the ones that you state in your requirements, if any, are uh, conforming with the information you have uh, in the state charts, right? Then uh, the last uh, block of, uh, of uh, correctness metrics is uh, concerning the idea of uh, patterns. Uh, for us, uh, patterns are key. These are just a few examples of, of patterns. Because they describe, as I was mentioning, introducing before, they describe the structure of um, uh, uh, that is offered uh, to, to the authors of the textual requirements, right? So, uh, of course, uh, there could be um, plenty of different uh, patterns, uh, uh, ERs or sophists or your own patterns or whatever. But uh, to me, what is important after uh, all of these uh, patterns is that uh, uh, this slightly constrained natural language uh, can bridge the gap uh, between textual requirements and model requirements. So this is, uh, to me, key uh, when we embrace uh, this uh, uh, model-based discipline, the idea of, uh, okay, even if uh, I allow uh, for some uh, sort of uh, textual requirements, uh, we can slightly, as I say, slightly constrain the way you write requirements so that uh, uh, other operations like automatic check-ins or uh, transformation from uh, textual requirements to models or from models to textual requirements uh, could be far easier uh, than uh, compared with the idea of uh, having uh, large uh, pieces of uh, text uh, as a requirement, right? So when we manage uh, our users to, uh, to follow uh, uh, one of the different uh, patterns that uh, they are offered 
or one of the different patterns that uh, they can uh, create on their own, then uh, the possibilities for these transformations and, and uh, for uh, to have a more balanced and uh, and uh, and um, uh, balanced between textual and, and models is uh, is is key with uh, with this right with this uh, idea of patterns. Then, uh, if um, following with this uh, uh, idea of uh, our CCC approach, correctness, consistency, and completeness, uh, completeness, uh, I should say that completeness is probably the most uh, uh, challenging uh, quality dimension for requirements. It is difficult uh, for our tool, it is difficult also for, for a human, for an engineer. Uh, how to know when you are done with a document? Uh, one requirement more is meaning that uh, you are out of the scope, you are over specifying something, you are duplicating something or something similar, but one less is meaning that you are missing an important uh, part of, of your of your system, right? So how to know when, when to stop is, is key. Uh, so in our tool, uh, our tool will never tell you, well, you are done, but at least uh, what we can do is we can compare both uh, textual specifications and, uh, and model, uh, and model uh, uh, information so that we can check what is missing from one side or from the other side. So following this uh, small uh, example, uh, I have uh, just created a kind of a block diagram here on the left, uh, together with a state chart uh, to, the, to the right. And uh, I have uh, written this uh, small document just with uh, six requirements, so that uh, when uh, the RAT tool is analyzing this uh, document, uh, then clearly we can identify the elements that appear in the model so we can say, OK, for the first requirement, computer, oh, computer is there. So in terms of completeness, we can check, we can tick. Yes, uh, uh, you are dealing with uh, computers in your specification. And you are also dealing with a monitor here. Uh, if we uh, follow one, uh, yes, we are dealing with uh, with a normal state, which is uh, this one. And uh, we are dealing with, um, with a low battery state or mode here, low battery. And uh, this is requirement is stating a transition uh, when the computer is not plugged in and the computer is in normal state. So this is the source uh, um, state. Um, and uh, the level of battery drops below 10%. The computer shall transit to low battery. Uh, the tool will also tell you, OK, this transition uh, is OK, is mentioned. Uh, same for the rest. Uh, so uh, having at the state uh, monitor or even the property of, of the weight of the computer, right? So all this is what, uh, according to this a small document, has been uh, or can be automatically detected, considering that the rest, uh, if we only consider these six requirements, the rest is, is missing. So this is uh, correctness. Then uh, uh, concerning consistency, consistency is also uh, very, uh, or we have uh, came out with a very complete uh, set of uh, tools to, to help uh, uh, engineers uh, conforming consistency between requirements and models. So we have identified uh, these uh, four uh, sub uh, uh, dimensions within uh, consistency, including uh, consistency in the way the structure uh, uh, you follow for your requirements. This is a pattern based writing. A consistency in the way you are naming your different entities in both in your requirements and in your models based on dictionaries and models. Um, consistency, of course, uh, uh, among requirements, overlapping requirements or contradictory requirements, and also consistency between requirements and models. So all these uh, four uh, sub dimensions of consistency has been considered in the in the RAT tool. So just uh, some examples before I start uh, the, the demo is, uh, for instance, uh, uh, coming back to the idea of uh, requirements, so the definition of these three requirements that I was, sorry, requirements patterns that I was introducing before. The idea of uh, when I am uh, working on top of uh, the uh, RAT uh, tool and uh, aiming to write a new requirement, the possibility for me to pick as a user, to pick one of these requirements uh, patterns so that I can uh, easily uh, follow this uh, structure, the structure represented by the pattern. And also, as you can see here, when uh, you are writing requirements uh, following this uh, uh, pattern, uh, the tool can connect uh, to, to the model and retrieve, uh, in this case from Capella, we can retrieve the content from the model, which is presented in front of you, so that uh, you will always uh, pick the exact uh, names and you will never guess, okay, what uh, uh, should be the name for this particular uh, subsystem or component in, in my system, right? So the, the pattern will work uh, together with the identification of the name of the entities uh, from uh, for your requirement. I will try to show it uh, in, the, in the demo, right? Um, 
Another important uh, uh, characteristic that uh, you can find with our tool when following patterns is the extraction of uh, content uh, for the ontology. If I consider this uh, uh, very short uh, document now with uh, seven requirements concerning our tool RAT and our tool RQA, then by means of using patterns, we can very easily extract and say that uh, this document uh, is identifying uh, two system names, RQA and RAT, uh, is identifying two states, is identifying a trigger, and is identifying a lot of uh, the other content. So all this uh, extraction uh, is, uh, is done automatically and that can help uh, um, uh, the users of uh, Capella populating the, um, uh, the models when they start uh, from, uh, from a textual requirements document. I will try to show it uh, in, in the demo as well. So uh, more about uh, patterns is also patterns can help you in the in uh, avoiding false positives in the detection of uh, of issues in your requirements. So um, uh, one of the um, rules uh, according to Incuse is uh, is the avoid of uh, or, or let's say the use of active voice, meaning avoiding passive voice, right? Uh, so, to me, uh, passive voice is not an issue itself uh, in a requirement, uh, but uh, passive voice is an issue because it is prone to missing the subject, and to me this is the key point when you miss the subject. Uh, th this means that uh, passive voice in the main, act in the main action, like uh, after the sal, uh, could be, and it is in indeed, uh, harmful, while passive voice in the condition can be uh, harmless. This is a screenshot of our RAT uh, tool. Uh, where you can see that uh, the tool has identified, uh, or you can find here, in, in fact, uh, two uh, examples of passive voice. Is activated is uh, clearly passive voice, and shall be redirected is also passive voice. However, the tool only identify uh, only identifies one of these, this one, the one after the shall, uh, because the other one is considered as a part of the condition, and you can always. Uh, 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 tell the tool or ask the tool to find passive voice when it is not uh, coming in the condition. Of course, if you don't like this rule and you want uh, to uh, identify passive voice wherever in your requirement, it is uh, very easy. It takes one second to, to change the configuration of the tool and uh, uh, ask the tool to detect uh, these uh, two passive voices, right? But if you want uh, to, to be more, uh, to consider only uh, those outside of the condition, then, of course, in order to do so, uh, uh, it is very easy in the tool, and the tool has to identify or has to follow a pattern so that uh, very quickly we can identify that when the alarm is activated is part of the condition, right? Then uh, consistency with uh, dictionaries, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we can uh, we will be connecting uh, to the different uh, models, uh, uh, model elements in in uh, Capella uh, by executing a different number of uh, queries, so that uh, we can extract uh, all the element names uh, that uh, will be used or, or will be offered uh, to the authors of the requirements while he or she is uh, actually writing the requirements. Right. So all this is extracted from the model, so that is offered. And uh, the tool can, uh, uh, in real time, can highlight uh, uh, this uh, content in your text. Uh, so this uh, highlight aircraft is meaning that aircraft is uh, part of the model. So that uh, even if uh, I now go and change uh, this uh, uh, system name in my model, then automatically all the requirements will be changed accordingly. Right. Uh, also, automatic generation of traces uh, uh, with the requirements. So as soon as I write a requirement uh, which is mentioning uh, different elements in in my uh, in my system, automatically the tool will create uh, these uh, traces for you, right? Uh, consistency that uh, I was mentioning. So this is similar to uh, consistency checking between requirements and models. So this is a similar example. But now what uh, the tool is is uh, checking is uh, is not uh, completeness as, as before. Now it is checking that uh, if I say that the computer shall have two monitors, the same information is uh, stated here with the computer and monitor. But if I uh, the second requirement is saying the computers shall have two engines, the structure of these two requirements is, seems to be exactly the same. But of course, uh, uh, the meaning of this is uh, or this one is meaning something that is not in the model. So this is why it is uh, uh, represented here in red. So the tool will identify this as a requirement which is not consistent with the model. Similar for the following requirement, a state in this transition, which is in the model. But um, the fourth one uh, is mentioning a transition which is not part of the model, so that the tool will or can identify this requirement as a non-consistent requirement. And the final check-in is with regards to the, uh, to the values of the properties. In my property, I have a limit between the weight of the computer, shall be between one to two kilo. 
uh, in my requirement, I said that 3.5 kilograms plus minus 10 percent, clearly out of the limit. So the two will uh, say that uh, this requirement is not consistent, right? Then one of the final uh, capabilities is a uh, round trip uh, between uh, uh, of, of the requirements that you can manage in in, uh, in Capella and uh, the requirements uh, that uh, you can manage in an external requirements management tool like uh, doors or integrity or RECAIE for Excel or whatever. So we have implemented a round trip that allows you a, a full time uh, synchronization uh, of, of the requirements at uh, both sides uh, so that the uh, modifications in one side can be automatically uh, moved uh, to the other side, right? I, I will try to show this uh, in a minute in, in, in my demo. Then usability, all this information is in front of you. Uh, the, uh, the requirements in a, in a table, let's say, in a grid, uh, with the hyperlinks to the name of the elements, uh, with the level of quality, with the quality recommendations to improve the quality of your requirements, so all this in, in a single view. Uh, then accessibility, uh, we have implemented also a connection with uh, Team for Capella, uh, so that, uh, as, uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, the tool is, is uh, or can uh, work with uh, Team for Capella as well, right? So, a final block of this presentation before the demo is uh, the possibility to uh, not only to, to use RAT inside of, um, of uh, Capella, but also, uh, as uh, some of you already know, we have implemented uh, RAT uh, as connected uh, to other uh, tools, especially requirements management tools like uh, DOORS or, or um, plenty of others. So the idea here is, um, is that uh, for all of you that uh, want uh, to write or to keep the requirement outside, including uh, the uses of this uh, synchronization that I was mentioning before, um, I would like uh, to write my requirements outside, but uh, still uh, having, in, having in front of me uh, the name of the elements that uh, I have in my model or the restrictions that I have defined in my model and so on and so forth. So the idea is, uh, is uh, to connect uh, uh, Capella to our Knowledge Manager tool, right? So this is represented by this uh, strange uh, shape. Uh, so that um, uh, as soon as I can connect uh, our ontology to, uh, to um, a model, a capella model, then I can I can even uh, write my requirements as, as is represented here. This is uh, this is uh, IBM DOS, and from here I can still write my requirements, and I can be offered, uh, as I was mentioning before, as as if I was uh, inside of uh, Capella, I can be offered uh, all the names uh, that are coming from a uh, capella model. So in here, I'm writing a state transition requirement and all this uh, uh, for all of you that uh, uh, know a little bit uh, about uh, the IFE uh, system example, then you can see that uh, you can find that uh, all these states are states uh, defined in this, uh, in this uh, IFE example, right? Uh, similar for uh, consistency checking. If I uh, write a requirement which is a state in a transition, which is not valid, According to my Capella model, I can have the tool telling me, wow, uh, the structure of this requirement seems to be OK, but uh, you are uh, representing a transition between two states that are actually not uh, fully linked in your, in your requirement, right? So I, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Now I have a video uh, showing you some of this uh, uh, content. And then after that, uh, uh, Samuel, I don't know if uh, we can start the questions now or after the video, probably better after the video, right? Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> Maybe okay. we can have the demo and then uh, Perfect. Perfect. questions. Uh -huh. So they certainly have time to, to ask their questions during the video. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, so probably you will find out uh, more, more questions during this uh, video. So this is... Um, uh, on the left, uh, IBM doors, on the right, uh, Capella. So this uh, demonstration starts with the uh, synchronization that I was uh, mentioning before. So this is just a uh, 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 DOS document containing requirements for the IFE um, system. And uh, I have uh, here in, in uh, Capella this, uh, this requirements module, which is empty today. So I open uh, in read only my requirements document uh, and I start uh, the synchronization. So the synchronization, of course, uh, implements uh, two sides. Uh, in this uh, instance, uh, side one is, is the DOORS document, uh, while uh, side two is, is the Capella model. So let me pick uh, information for this uh, Capella model. So side two is Capella. And uh, uh, I pick uh, the namespace and, uh, and I pick uh, the, the model that uh, 
that uh, contains uh, uh, the target uh, module or model where I want uh, to move my or synchronize my requirements. So I establish the connection to the um, uh, to the workspace. So this is the path of my workspace, and uh, this is the uh, these are the two models in within this workspace. I pick uh, this one, and within this workspace or this project, I have uh, three uh, different requirements modules. So I pick uh, one of them. The synchronization is always uh, document uh, to document, not project to project. It has to be more accurate in this synchronization. So once I have established uh, both uh, both sides, I click on uh, next. Now the tool is is checking the requirements at the other side. It is very quick at this uh, this uh, opportunity because there is nothing at the other side. So the recommended action uh, for all of the requirements is uh, to be created in site two, of course, because uh, site two, this is the first uh, synchronization and that site two is is fully empty when i uh, uh, perform the round trip back to those uh, uh, in, in a couple of minutes uh, then you will see like the tool detects that uh, both uh, sites are no longer empty right so execute the synchronization and now i have uh, all my requirements here so this is uh, real time by the way so i have all these uh, requirements now in uh, now in capella uh, so that uh, i can continue uh, working in capella Especially, I can, I can now create, uh, for instance, the system functions uh, uh, following the requirement, the, the, the functions that are stated from the requirements. By the way, you can ask uh, uh, our tool RQA uh, also to extract uh, all these uh, uh, system functions automatically for you. Uh, what we have done is we have accepted uh, all these suggestions and we have created uh, all these uh, system functions in our model. So, um, now uh this is the list of uh, of requirements uh, but now uh, in the copy that uh, we have on top of capella so this is the grid of requirements in, in capella you can see the requirements uh, the level of quality uh, you can see the hyperlinks that i was mentioning and clearly you can see that uh, most of these requirements are just uh, using a, a system function however there is one without uh, a hyperlink in the system function the main reason is that uh, I just make a mistake, let's say, and I uh, detected uh, this uh, play video games that is not a system function. So from here, it is uh, it is like uh, having a requirements management tool inside of uh, of um, of Capella, even if the management uh, is actually uh, outside. But uh, you can continue uh, if you want uh, to make some uh, minor changes. You can uh, do it from here, like removing this requirement. But uh, I will uh, transfer back to those uh, these uh, these all these changes. If uh, we continue in Capella with uh, the architectural decisions and the compositions of, uh, of my IFE system into, uh, into the main components of this uh, system, like uh, air, uh, aircraft uh, front server, CTV, cabin screen, and, and cabin terminal, then I can now open uh, this uh, second document. Remember, now I have, uh, uh, I have uh, two documents, uh, requirements uh, modules uh, here in Capella. So now this is the these are all the requirements for the second one. Uh, uh, similar to the previous example, uh, you can see the requirement, you can see the hyperlinks, you can see the level of quality. And from here, if needed, uh, you can uh, uh, use the buttons at the top uh, to create uh, a new requirement or remove uh, a requirement from the list. So when it comes to writing a requirement, uh, uh, you will be offered uh, always uh, one of the patterns that uh, uh, is included in the database so that the uh, writing requirements, uh, as you can see, is as simple as just uh, following the pattern and uh, following the recommendations uh, of the, all these names, by the way, are coming uh, from, uh, from, the, um, from the model in real time. Uh, we, we also offer the possibility to detect uh, duplicated requirements. So this uh, uh, now uh, this requirement with this ID is, uh, is duplicated in my system. You can see like uh, the the text itself. Uh, if I go a little bit uh, back, uh, the text itself of the of both requirements is not uh, is actually not fully the same. Uh, this one is saying the FE system shall have 100 uh, CTV, and this one is saying the FE system should contain 126 CTV. But the tool considers that uh, both requirements are meaning exactly the same, even if they are not written in the, exactly the same way. So this is why. The level of similarity for these uh, two requirements is established to uh, to 100 allowing you of course uh, never to duplicate uh, this requirement uh, so i will not um, uh, save these changes because this will 
uh, mean a duplicated requirement that of course is is a source of uh, of inconsistency in your requirements. So let me uh, continue with uh, other uh, requirements. Even if you copy and paste uh, from an ex external uh, document or even notepad, as in here, you, you will have uh, this uh, identification of the hyperlinks, so the main components or entities described in the, in the, co in the requirements will be automatically highlighted, even if you don't uh, uh, type your requirement following the pattern, even if you just uh, paste, uh, this is done automatically. Or even if you have a bulk uh, uh, paste, so you copy two or 200 requirements and paste uh, these uh, 200 requirements uh, now in, in the RAT, uh, you will see now that uh, you will find uh, two new rows in, in this table, and both of them with uh, the, the system names and the system functions uh, uh, fully um, uh, hyperlink in the requirement. Right? So I close this screen now so that uh, I can continue a little bit. So this is uh, uh, this is one of the requirements that I have uh, just created, and I just uh, want to, to to show you how uh, this uh, requirement is uh, fully uh, linked to the entities that is uh, describing. So that if I uh, drag and drop, or if I pick and and show this requirement in one of my models, uh, you will see like uh, there are a number of. Uh, uh, traces uh, between uh, this uh, or the, the box representing the requirement and uh, the entities that are named into the requirement, including uh, the possibility to show all this information in the Capella semantic browser as well. Right. Well, I continue a little bit. Uh, Now, uh, let me uh, show you how to move all these uh, changes in, in the requirements back uh, back to those. So this is the synchronization, the same screen as before. Uh, the same screen also appears uh, in, in Capella. But now the sites are, are, are meaning uh, that I want to move uh, my information back to those. As you can see here, uh, automatically uh, the synchronization module detects uh, those requirements that uh, already ex exist uh, in both sites. Uh, together with uh, some requirements that has been uh, either modified or uh, uh, removed or added uh, in uh, in all these operations that uh, we have uh, done uh, here in Capella, right? So, if I move a little bit ahead of the video, uh, you can uh, element by element uh, you can uh, choose uh, the operation you want to do. So, for instance, if this is a new requirement, you will find the operation not to update but the operation to create. Uh, like in here, create item in, in the other side, in side two, right? Or you can de decide, no, 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 I want to remove uh, this element of the play video games, remember, was the requirement that I invented uh, that is not following one of the system functions. So instead of uh, moving this uh, back uh, to this change back to doors, what I want to do is to remove this uh, from doors. So you can by hand uh, here uh, change uh, the actions that is provided auto automatically by the tool. Uh, telling or asking the tool to remove this uh, uh, in the target of this uh, uh, synchronization. So the same for others. I move a little bit ahead of the video, so I can do the same for others. And then when I uh, perform the synchronization, then uh, I will see I can uh, go back uh, to those and see all these uh, changes now applied into into those. So again, I can open my uh, DOS uh, document with uh, all the requirements, but now also uh, all these changes and uh, and, uh, and also the removed uh, requirement, uh, of course, uh, is not uh, part of this of this document anymore. From here, as I mentioned, I can uh, continue uh, working with the requirements, uh, with the possibility, of course, uh, to follow patterns and the possibility to pick elements, uh, the name of the entities uh, from the model. So even if uh, now this is not the RAT plugin for Capella, this is the RAT plugin for for uh, doors, as you can see here. But uh, the tool can also can I still go back to the model and uh, tell me that uh, this transition that uh, was stated in the textual requirement is not a valid uh, transition according to the state uh, chart of my model. So let me show you uh, this uh, state chart describing a number of transitions uh, from. Uh, uh, for my system, from a startup to ready, from ready to fully operational, or to to maintenance, from fully operational to degraded or halted, and uh, back to ready. 
But uh, in my requirement, I was stating a transition between fully operational and uh, a startup, which is not valid according to my to my model. So this is why, uh, as you will see, the tool will will say that uh, this is not uh, okay. While uh, this one, the tool is telling you that uh, the transition uh, is is fully okay. The, uh, this requirement is stating uh, a transition uh, from degraded to halted, and uh, this is uh, here in the model. So this is why the requirement is uh, is uh, labeled as uh, high quality. While if I go back to the previous one. The requirement is uh, in real time uh, telling you that uh, there is an invalid transition here. So I can remove uh, this name and uh, I can uh, also pick the pattern to be capable of uh, following the names uh, coming from the dictionary. So that uh, all these uh, names now uh, are the name of the states as coming from the dictionary and I can pick uh, this uh, ready state. And now this ready state is of course a valid transition according to my model. So this is why everything is green in, in this screen. Uh, even if I am not uh, um, now uh, within uh, Capella, but uh, the information from the model can be there uh, in front of you in indoors as well. So now uh, I go back uh, to to my model. Yes, yeah, Jose, we are supposed to be just out of time now. Oh, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we keep time for questions anyway, but maybe too much time. Uh, I don't know if you have a lot of okay, I can... to present. Uh, I can stop here if you wish, uh, because the video is uh, okay. I still need uh, ten more minutes uh, to show all the video. Okay. So I can <laughs> stop. I can stop here if if needed. Uh, uh, of course, I can uh, I can provide you all with the full video if you want uh, to have the full recording. I can provide you uh, with uh, the full video, not only this uh, part of the video. And now, of course, I'm open uh, for for questions. Okay, so thanks for the, and thanks for this clear presentation and and for this demo. Uh, yes, so we, we have questions. Uh, the first one, uh, after synchronization, are the system functions automatically, automatically created from the requirements? Yeah, uh, not in this version. In this version, the tool, suggest, uh, the tool can suggest uh, the system functions. Uh, by parsing these textual requirements, the tool suggests uh, the name of the, of the system functions. But um, it is not uh, in this version. It is not automatically created. Uh, you have to do it uh, following the suggestions. You can uh, do it uh, manually. Uh, we expect uh, in in a uh, coming version very soon uh, to have this uh, feature of uh, having automatic uh, creation. Okay. Thanks. Um, oh, have you defined the robustness of requirements? Well, uh, uh, the word uh, robustness uh, is uh, has to be clarified. <laughs> Probably, I, I used uh, this word in my in my slide. I was meaning uh, in, in our approach, a robust requirement is a requirement which is uh, correct, consistent, and, uh, and make the specification complete. Right. So uh, all these uh, three quality dimensions are can be analyzed by by the tool. Mainly, correctness and consistency can be analyzed by the React uh, tool. Uh, however, completeness requires the full uh, uh, the full document, uh, not on one individual requirement. This is why we also uh, use this other tool that uh, you can see now on the screen. This is the RQA. This is uh, the border, the border of the R80, let's say. Uh, so RQA can consider the document uh, as a whole, uh, either a, a requirement document in DOS or uh, the content of a requirement module in Capella. Is considered as a whole, so that we can check uh, completeness. This is, by the way, what is uh, what is uh, what we are doing here. Uh, we are identifying uh, that uh, one of the system functions that appear in in the model is not mentioned in the requirement specification, uh, provoking a gap uh, in, in my in my specification. Right? We can do the same with uh, uh, transitions that are not mentioned in my document or whatever. So this is uh, this is completeness. What you can see now in the screen. Okay, thanks. And can you start writing the requirement and then to produce a Capella model? Um, similar to the first question, in in this uh, version that uh, is available now on our website, uh, we cannot have automatic uh, generation. But uh, we expect, uh, of course, uh, part of our capabilities is is uh, is to extract information, especially uh, when you start uh, not from uh, pure free uh, textual uh, requirements. But if you follow uh, patterns, it is very easy for us uh, to generate information from the model. So we expect uh, very soon in the coming months to have this, this feature implemented. 
Okay. And um, can you define also the expected proof for each requirement? Uh, uh, sorry, someone, can you uh, say it again, uh, please? Can you define the proof for each requirement? I mean, the question is, can you add uh, new attributes, maybe? Uh, to the to the requirements, uh, yes. uh, yeah, uh, you have to consider that um, uh, our tool uh, RMP or RQA, the one you see in the screen now, they are not uh, they are not uh, tools for requirements management. So our only topic is uh, quality inspection or transformation or synchronization. But uh, we are not managing the requirements on our tool. So uh, we can manage uh, some attributes, but uh, we cannot extend the number of attributes uh, that are defined for the requirement because uh, the requirement is not managed uh, in our repository, by the way. Uh, so our database will never copy uh, the requirement. We just connect to the source of the requirement, uh, either DOORS or Capella in this example. We analyze the quality, but we, we never uh, store the content in our site because we are not inten intending to have a requirements uh, management so we cannot extend the number of attributes. We cannot do these kind of things. We have to rely on, on the requirements management tool, on DOORS or, or Capella to do so. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, next question, maybe a bit tricky. Uh, uh, how does the tool manage graphical requirements, uh, images, graphs? Mm, we do nothing with this. So we <laughs> manage in a, in, a, in a very easy way. Wait, doing, <laughs> sorry, doing uh, nothing with it. <laughs> sorry okay. Um, okay, in which tool are the transformation functions between texture requirement and model elements phone? Uh, is there any intelligence provided by the reuse company? Uh, if, uh, uh, if what you mean is, is the synchronization, then it is uh, uh, in, in both sides, in uh, both or in Capella, but I, yeah, yeah. I assume so. Yeah, but if what you mean is the intelligence uh, for the uh, automatic uh, generation of the model elements, as I mentioned, probably all these questions are written all together after my first answers. But uh, uh, now we are not uh, still not uh, generating automatically the elements. We are just uh, provoking the, the synchronization and uh, and then uh, the creation of the system functions. Uh, sorry if, if uh, after the video you thought that it was automatically. But it is not. The, the RQA can suggest a list of functions, but uh, still today, or list of uh, states or list of uh, elements, but still uh, in this version, uh, you have to create it uh, by hand in this version. Okay. And regarding the automatic um, update of, uh, of uh, name elements, uh, it seems that some, some are afraid about uh, a non-controlled propagation of those uh, modifications. So, mm -hmm. is there a way to ask confirmation between uh, propagate those change? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, no, uh, not today. Today, the propagation is automatic, uh, which uh, can mean, as you exactly as you said, uh, that uh, you can lose control of of these uh, of some of these changes. Uh, uh, we can, of course. Um, we could implement a more uh, controlled way of, of this information, and I do think that it is a very nice idea for, for the next uh, version of the tool. But uh, today is is fully automatic uh, and might mean a loss of control a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, so Jose, we, we still have a lot of those questions, but I'm afraid we, we clearly won't have time to answer everything. So, uh, we will... We'll, Take note of them uh, and maybe maybe answer uh, in a second time through email or we, we don't mm -hmm. know. Uh, okay, uh, I would be very happy to to answer by email. Thank you, Samuel. So, um, so, so as I say, I will I will conclude briefly. Just few announcements uh, before that. Uh, and once again, thanks, Jose, for, for your time and this presentation. It was quite, quite interesting, and I'm sure you, you, you raised a lot of interest. So uh, I just would like to remind you that uh, uh, the Capra Community Survey 2020 has begun. Uh, the intent is to have a representative feedback on the way Capra is used. Uh, obviously, we would be very glad to have yours, and it will just take uh, 10 minutes of your time to fill it. So you will find this survey on uh, bit.ly slash capital community survey. 
and it's quite easy to find this address in the, in the regular journals. Uh, among the first coming events, I would like to add like CSDM 2020 will sponsor. Uh, it will be at the end of December as always, but uh, in a remote version. Uh, it's usually a very good event and I'm sure uh, it will be the same this year. Uh, of course, uh, we will also have regular capital webinar in the meantime, so keep, uh, keep posted. And last but not least, uh, you may have noticed we, we now have an adopters page on the Capella website. Uh, you can take a look to see which are the other company who have declared themselves as a, as a user. And if ever you wish to help us there, uh, you just have to send a request email as indicated at the bottom of this page. So once again, thanks for having attended this webinar. Have a good day and goodbye.